should we? Yep. Is now the time? <laughs> yep. Eminem called you out. Oh, can you say that name on this? <laughs> yes, I can. He, yeah. watches, he watches the show, by the way. Marshall Mathers. Wow. Yeah, shout out he to Marshall. He was actually the first person to co-sign the show. Shout out to Marshall. Um, definitely gave me a beautiful co-sign mm. early in the game. You know what I mean? But he called you out. And for the rest of us, it was like, oh, shit. Mm. Oh, let's see what's about to happen. So, okay, the name you just said. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like Voldemort. Yeah. It's hey. like Voldemort. Hey, right. Hey, listen. <laughs> listen. listen. Yo. It's not a name. It's not a person. It's not just a brand. It's an institution. Mm. You know this by now. There's so much involved with trying to dance with that. Right? Because when one entity, one institution right. pays so many checks and, you know, there's so much riding on that, you know, just his peace of mind, sit down, right? right. Make the records that he made, those hits. Nobody's going to allow you to mess with his energy, his distraction, or, you know, not even be a problem. You know, they're going to, you know, not this situation in particular, but in, in you know, if we're watching a movie, what do they do? They're going to. You know, inject you with something, break one arm, you know, send then throw you in the ring with them. You understand right. what I mean? They need, they need the <laughs> institution to be, not to say that he don't get busy and go for the crown and do what he do, but add, a, you know, a billion dollar company on top of that. Right? Right. And, and to tell you the truth, you know, battle rap is battle rap, but the distinction between what I experienced and what, you know, I'm sure some battle rappers experienced this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say what label, but I had a $6 million bounty on, if I had a show for 7500 that label would pay the promoter double. To not book you. Right. So paying that label double to not book me means that even if I get my first half for, for the show, right. the promoter call back and say, hey, look, we got a problem with the venue, but look, just keep the first half. Mm -hmm. And they take the double it was paid to them mm -hmm. plus my second half. Mm -hmm. So this was going on when it was going on. I didn't know because once again, I was running around with blinders on. I didn't understand institutions right. and I didn't even know that rap had that kind of thing going on. Right. How did you find out that was happening to you? I, my, I'm assuming the Cool J situation. Well, you know, you know, in certain situations, you know, whenever I had a homie that's smashing one of the bras up there, one of the VPs, man, and she just told him. You know, mm -hmm. and then he came back and told me. So, so you. I mean, this is this your conspiracy is, theory is based on a chick. Conspiracy that, theory, theory. killer talking is what you say. <laughs> I mean, I mean, how can I prove that though? How could you not? Well, you want me dragging in here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where she at. Like, oh, but, but I mean, not not just not just one source. <laughs> Hold on, we just asked him why he didn't shoot back at Eminem. Eminem and we well, I mean, he's, he's giving us the answer. Well, That's yeah, well, so no, yeah, real quick. So at that time. You not having the, the knowledge you have of the game, you felt like you wasn't comfortable enough or maybe confident enough to go against him because of the institution right, so that was going this. on? Okay, good question. I don't know if you even remember a record called See True Hollywood Stories. I don't even know if you remember it. Everybody, you know, it's like the weakest record probably I ever did. It was mm -hmm. a satire album, but I don't know. It wasn't really received that well. It did pretty mm -hmm. well for like a little underground record. It's still selling. It's still on Amazon, right? Right. But at the time, it got me to a lot of trouble. Like, so I put the record out and I brought Stan back to life, right? What year was this? This was 2000. 2001, 2001. Okay. Okay. Like I took the part where from the interlude where Stan was going crazy and was driving and drove off the bridge and splashed in the water and I, the interlude started with me to rain the rain going uh, to catch the 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 the, 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 air, the 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 plane and I I I saw the car crash happen and I said told my man Pac Man Sean Wright you know what I'm saying shout out to Big Pac Man and we drove we drove we pulled over and we jumped in the water and. Brought stand back to Sean Staven, gave him CPR and everything. I wouldn't do that today because you don't want to catch the virus or something. But <laughs> right. You don't want to catch the new variant, right? But you know, some fentanyl on you or something. But right. we brought him back to life. Right. And then we ran the ad in the source, mm -hmm. right? It was a $25,000 page ad, by the way. It was independent, yeah. right? It was independent. Oh, and we bought the Shit, ad. What you mad at me for? Yeah, but we bought the ad. 
And we ran the ad where Stan was writing a letter to Eminem to say, hey, yo, how you doing, you know, Marshall? I'm with cannabis now. You look, no hard feelings. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. I just wanted to come out on the road and he got me on a tour, with, right? Yeah. So we were looking to make a little bit of noise off of that right. so I can really have Stan on the road with me. Right. The guy that took the picture for the album cover, his name is David Anders, who's now like a super movie star. But at the time, he just wanted to use, yo, cannabis, can I use this for my glossies? I said, fine, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we were gonna go to England. We were in England already. Mm -hmm. When the record came out, we were gonna take that money, just wrap the van, the, the ambulance, make it look like it was American, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Get the tour bus, go on tour. 175 bands came in back in 01. You know, the label that said artists we talking about was mm -hmm. on, had sued Selecto Hits, the label that put out the indirect, independent record Mm -hmm. Sent them, you know, something this thick saying, you know, if you put this out, you know, we're going to sue you. All the pages in there was like, this thick was like three, four hundred pages with stuff like dealing with three, six mafia, stuff like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But on page. So Johnny Phillips, shout out to Johnny Phillips, senior, who was he has like that real Elvis catalog and stuff. He called Interscope to find out what, what was how could he what's going on. Right. He had our check. Mm -hmm. Right. One seventy five. And um, you know, when he spoke up there to to the their law legal team up there, they said, look, go to page 202. He said, all right, that's our problem. We can make your problem go away if you make our problem go away. What's and, two, what and was on 202? With, with the law's cannabis with the page standing there with the with the see true Hollywood stories, John. They wanted him to not pay us a dime so that, to just make it all go away. Because remember, I was about to take Stan on tour. I was about to I was about to shoot a video. In 01, the video would have been a real video. Right. You know, 16 millimeter film. Right. You know, we were getting that celluloid film from a school, school over there that did film and they had leftover film. Right. And we were getting real 16 millimeter celluloid film. Right. And we were gonna take this 175, I take my cut, 50 and change, right. and make it happen. That was like kiboshed. Why? It goes back to what you're saying. I can't prove it, but there. But obviously, man, you got your number one star thoroughbred, man. You're not going to allow that to get distracted with all this. We got other stuff we're doing, you know? Uh, you know I, I can't. I don't know if I can give. I don't know if I can follow that, bro. I hate you. Why, why didn't you go to the um, mix CD? Say again? The mix CD. But you was the king. Mix tapes. So, you know, funny enough, when I had my publishing deal, right? I was supposed to get a second installment on my publishing. And um, don't want to say the guy's name because, you know, he, he was chairman of that company at the time. It's a huge publishing company. And um, I signed to them initially because he said that you always have work cameras. You're such an incredible writer. We could always use it for other stuff, you know, voiceovers, all that stuff. And to tell you the truth, you know, I would have wanted to been like the Shrek voice or, you know, one of them Darth Vader voices on one of them jokes. I, I was into that, right? right. And um, I signed to them for that reason, because I knew that I would always have work outside of. And so he had said to me, same thing you said, when you know my second album, his third album was gonna come out with Universal. He was getting, paying me to record my third album. And he was saying, you know, you should go to the mixtape scene. Look, man, I was maybe like 24, 25. And I had already pretty much like, you know, for the first album, I traveled the world with Clef. My right? passport had so many stamps and I had to get a new passport. Right. I'd seen so much and been so many places and knew what rap can do at a max level. That going back to the mixtape scene for me, it was like- Going back local. It's, yeah, it's, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just that I knew that what I'm trying to do, because with internet, it was a lot of things I was trying to do. Basically, what is happening now with everybody, I was trying to do that then. Right. That's what I was trying to do. Everything would it take for you to do this now, I was doing that then. I, my my, my Cannabis.com site had 18 million hits from September of 97 to September of 98. And it was, that traffic was, was uh, collected by a company called Alexis. Look it up. I think Google bought them. That was real. 
-hmm. I could prove it to you by bringing in the sheet, but the ink's rubbed out, you know what I'm saying? Right. From storage, like these, these are things that I can't even prove. <laughs> Smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends sleep earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf, you heard.